Hello to you newcomers and welcome back my lovely subscribers. This is Big Baby Props and I'm the Big Baby. Here we are, episode 2 of the Sith Acolyte Armor Tutorial. In the last episode we sanded and smoothed out the armor to prepare it for painting and in this episode that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's get right into it. The first thing we're going to need to do is lay a base coat of our matte black. This is going to serve as the foundation to our paint scheme so make sure to get a full coverage. Don't forget to paint the edges as well as a little bit on the inside. Be sure to use a matte black instead of a gloss otherwise the glossy tack material is going to interfere with our painting down the line. Wait about 20 minutes in between coats and aim for about two to three. Now that we've got a base coat down we can start working with silver to really get the metallic finish. Luckily for us this technique is really easy and gives great results very quickly. All you're going to need is silver paint, I'm using metallic aluminum, paper towels, and gloves. What we're going to do is spray just a little bit of paint into a folded up paper towel, then wipe that paint onto the armor. What's going to happen is the paint will be smeared across the armor and mix in with the black pretty well. This will give us an excellent effect of general wear on a metallic surface. As we're wiping, you'll find it difficult to reach the recessed areas with your towel, and that's exactly what we're going for. Having recessed areas remain black will help bring to life the weathered effect of the armor. Have a look at the helmet, for instance. The recessed black areas really accent the silver very well. We're going to try to reduce how much paint gets in those recessed areas. Now imagine if we painted the entire thing straight silver. It would definitely have a more solid color, but where's the fun in that? It would have no accent and no weathering. This style is really going to elevate the armor above a straight silver painted style. Be sure to also wipe the paint in varying directions. If all the paint has the same grain, so to speak, it doesn't look realistic. Instead, having the paint in many different ways gives the impression the armor was weathered in a random and realistic way. Using this method, I was able to cover the entire armor with less than a full can of spray paint so this method was also pretty economical. As I said earlier, I tried to minimize the paint in the recessed areas of the helmet. I'm going to go ahead and cover up any areas I did paint, and here's why. When the recessed areas have a uniform color, it really brings out the variance in silver on the upper areas. Take a look at the helmet when one side has the recessed areas painted, and the other does not. In my opinion, I like it a lot better when it's painted in. We don't really have to worry too much about this with the rest of the armor since it's not as detailed as the helmet, but I'll do a pass over it just to make sure anyway. Now that we've got some painted armor, our next task is to figure out how we're going to hold it onto our body, and that can be a challenge. I'm also going to be looking at buying a cloak instead of making one because I am straight up sewing impaired. So I'll let you guys know how that works out as well. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you're able to complete a project like this on your own. I have to say, I think it's really one of the most rewarding things to make your own cosplay from near scratch. Most of all, I hope to see you guys again in the next video. And as always, thank you all for watching.